Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Let's rip through some races here. Uh, let's start out with some Matchbox. We have a couple cars which I have zero expectations of any speed, but I thought they were unique. We'll run them down the track. We have a couple other cars which are the uh, Gold Saw Blades, which have proven themselves in the past, so uh, we'll take a look at them. We have a couple Fantasy Casting Hot Wheels, which have... Uh, been popular in the past and popular in the present and then we'll take a look at some premiums and uh, see what they've got first up is the matchbox morgan aeromax versus the matchbox tur tuscan s let's take a closer look all right in the runway show here the uh, aeromax has that 30s classic styling like of a Duesenberg or something. Uh, both colors on these cars are great. Uh, the Aeromax is a little bit deeper blue, and uh, the Tanto, pretty good on the front. We've got some license plate work, and some nice headlights. And on the back, we have some nice stripped taillights. I really like those taillights. And again, with the license plate. Um, Actually, the taillights are red. I, I think the striping is just the accent. Kind of cool. Let's take a look at the uh, Turtuscan S. A little more futuristic, a little more modern. That snub nose is very, very cool. I mean, it still has uh, aerodynamics to it, but it's just a, a great shape. I like the door styling. You know, it's a very cool door. The uh, wheels on both these cars worked okay nothing great but um doable nice tampo work on the back of the tur tuscan s i really do like the taillights and what they did with the uh license plate we have side mirrors on both of them and again we have a deep blue metal flake on the tur tuscan s and even a deeper blue on this Aeromax. Not, the flakes aren't as prominent. Enough of the fashion show. Let's get them on, uh, on the scale, then on the track. Aeromax weighing in at 38.6 grams. The Turtuscan S weighing in at 36.7 grams. Let's rack them. Turtuscan S is in the lane that's going to be nearest to me, and the Aeromax is going to be in the far lane. Let's get him going. I expect slow. I was not wrong. <laughs> 2209 for the Tuscan. 2235 for the Aeromax. Let's switch it. Not sure why. We'll start it from here. 2186, the Tuscan has a time of 2186, 2234 for the Aeromax. They are both going in the manufacturer's case, and that <laughs> Aeromax may not even make that. All right, guys, next up, we're going to forego the fashion show because we've seen these cars either on this channel or others. This is the Pontiac stock car by Matchbox. He weighs in at... 38.4 grams. This is the Camaro Z28. Yep. Gold saw blades. It weighs in at 31.2. I don't know. I've seen speed on, the, on some other channels. Hoping to try to get anything out of these cars. Uh, I haven't been impressed so far with their wheels or their speed. Let's see what we have here today. Start race one from up here. The Camaro is coming back. 21.45 for the stock car. 21.47 for the Camaro. We'll switch it up. All right, here we go. Race two, the stock car is up two. Wow. 
Wow. That Camaro has incredible top end speed. I really like the way that runs on the top end. I wish I had a speedometer because that thing probably out, outdoes that stock car without a without question on the top end. 2144 to 45, the stock car takes the race. Half a mile race, there's no doubt who would have won this one. Well, right now in the 31 to 40 plastic, there's turmoil, but there's not going to be for long. I have so many cars that um, need to get uh, some attention and get themselves back in these rankings, which are pretty competitive right now. Um, I'll be a spoiler. I've already filmed my 4th of July race. Currently, this is my gatekeeper, but it's really not. I just needed, I need some kind of filler, so just for the old patriotic sake, I thought I would fill them in. So, either of these cars could possibly beat this Diora 2. Pretty cool, though, huh? Yeah, 4th of July race will be coming up, and uh, you'll see this one in about a week. Here we go, the gatekeeper spot. Really, really not happy with the gatekeeper times right now. So again, we'll we'll take care of that here within about a month or so. But uh, here we go, race one. <laughs> I mean, Diora takes them down anyway. Good lord. Twenty-one fifty for the Pontiac stock car. Twenty-one forty-four for the Diora two. We'll switch it up. And remember, case races are the best beats out of four races, whoever has the best beat. Right now, the uh, Dior 2 is up six. The Dior 2 is up nine after two. 21.43 to 46. It's not a bad runner. It's just that I had cars in 21.30s in that gatekeeper spot and uh, kind of messed them up a little bit. Everything else looks pretty good, but uh, you got to clean up that gatekeeper. We'll start it from up here. Dior 2 is up 9. Good start. Dior 2 drives around it and puts him to bed. 2147 to 54. That is a 16 one thousandths beat after three races. That is a TKO. Pontiac stock car, again, <laughs> cannot do it. Alright guys, I have the crew chief doing some reworks on three cars here. In the meantime, let's race this Baja Bison. We've seen it. We haven't seen it here. I can't wait to run it on the track. It's going to go up against the Marvel Storm. This car was fast here maybe two or three years ago. And I haven't seen much of it on any tracks. So I thought I'll give it a try here and uh, pick this up for... 50 cents or something like that. The wheels are perfect on it. So let's get them weighed and get them going. The Baja Bison's coming in at 42.1 grams. And the Marble Storm is coming in at 50 grams even. I'm not going to do a fashion show on these guys. I mean, they're fantasy castings. They are what they are. Um, let's get them on the track and run them. Baja Bison in the far lane. Marvel Storm in the near lane. Where did Marvel Storm go? 2121 for the Marvel Storm. Hello. 2164 for the Baja Bison. Let's switch it. This race has already been decided, but let's just see what kind of times these guys run in race two. Twenty-one ninety-three for the bison. Look what this fool's running. Look what that fool is running. Twenty-one twenty-seven for the Marvel Storm. He's going to get a shot at the case. Well, this guy's going to the grandson. All right, more spoilers here today. <laughs> We will be seeing the Soldier 76 next week. It is now the gatekeeper in the 41 to 50 metal bottom class. Um, I think this is going to be a good race. This could be a short-lived stay for the uh, Soldier 76, but let's see. Let's get him on the scale. And again, this is just a preview of what you'll be seeing next week. 
Soldier 76 squeeze in at 41.7 grams. Let's get him on the track against the Marvel Storm. The crew has already done a rework on the Soldier 76 to get him to that point. This has been an initial work for the Marvel Storm. Let's start him from here. Four races to decide it. Here we go. Good race, Marvel Storm. 21.20 to 22. That's about what the uh, Soldier 76 ran in the last race. Two 1,000 speed. Let's get him to the top. All right. Two 1,000 uh, advantage by the Marvel Storm. Race 2. Marvel, again, 20 to 21. Consistent times. It is up 3. Storm is up three. This is race three. The soldier punches back with a 2120 to a 2122. The storm is up one, heading into race number four. Storm is up one. Race four will start it from here. That soldier. 2124 to 2136. I'm not sure about either of those times. We're going to restart that uh, with the pull start. Uh, the storm is up one, heading into a rerun of race four. Race four rerun. Storm is up one. Good start. That is a soldier defending. His gatekeeper spot by one one thousandths with a two one thousand speed twenty one twenty six to twenty eight. I will do a rework on that uh, Marvel Storm off camera after this video, and see if it has any more to uh, say about the situation for this gatekeeper race. But for right now, Soldier seventy six holding firm at the gatekeeper spot. All right, guys, let's take a look at a matchbox that we've seen on some other tracks before. This is the Mercedes. E430. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Let's weigh them up. 53.1 grams. Let's get them on the track and do a hot lap. Mercedes Benz E430 wagon hot lap and number one. Slow. 2144. Let's try him in the case. That's not going to go well. Um, we'll go up in the case. We'll come back to the gatekeeper if we need to. This is the Nissan Skyline um, from the Heritage Red Lines collection. Let's weigh him up and get him against that Mercedes. 56.5. This will not be close. So that is a gap. It even turned the lights off. <laughs> that happened in the other race too. Uh, my get back system is doing very well, but at times it does get back a little bit too hard. We'll run these guys again, but it was a car and a half and it was pulling. Starting from here. the times and there's the garbage bag last but not least is this shadow jet chase edition 2011 hot ones it's actually 2012 uh, when it says a date on the back guys it's a it's a year later that's actually issued yeah that's the day that it was made and carded but um, they always come out a year later so this is a 2012 hot ones Shadow Jet Chase Edition. I have not seen this on any channels. I'm not optimistic. Um, for as good as these wheels are on other castings, they were not good here. So let's weigh him up and see what he does on a hot lap. The Hot One Shadow Jet, 45.5 grams. No big fashion show. Let's just get a closer look at him. Really nice wheels. I like the Tampo and the yellow uh, windshield on it 
it's it's got a good line like all the shadow jets do and uh, metal bottom let's get them in the rack get them a hot lap hot lap number one Twenty one forty six. No bueno. Let's put them against the racks. Well, we did already see that Soldier seventy six. Let's see this Ford Mark four. He's um, an original Red Lines. Super excited about this car. I love the history on it. Uh, the car itself is probably in the top three uh, best cars ever built for. 24 hours of Le Mans. Just the history behind it is amazing. And he's going to take this Hot One Shadow Jet down pretty damn hard. We'll start it from here in race one. Twenty-one thirty-nine to a twenty-one forty-seven. That is the worst time that Mark IV has run ever. <laughs> Eight one thousand speed. Let's switch them up. Race two. That's a little more like what that Mark IV can do. Twenty one sixteen for the Mark IV. Twenty one fifty one for the Shadow Jet. He goes to bed. Yeah, it was one of those cars I knew I shouldn't have opened. It was just a rare car, being a chase, and Shadow Jets are quick at best none of them are elite that i found and i just took a shot at it because of the wheels but i just had a gut feeling especially when i worked the wheels i knew this was going to be a dog so sorry i opened it but glad we can show everybody what it's about all right guys bonus for today these cars have all gone under the wing of the new crew chief and they've gone through um, the dyno process the dyno tuning process in the garage first one to face this dior 2 which isn't my gatekeeper but i'm just sticking it there for now i i just have a gaping hole let's try the m3 m3 has been reworked let's get him on the line let's see what he can do m3 in a near lane dior 2 in the far lane dior 2 I'm going to call it one and done. That's nine one thousandths beat after one race. I don't need to see any more. Up next is the Pro Auto Pontiac stock car. Reworked and ready to go. Let's see what he can do against the Dior 2. Stock car in the far lane. Dior 2 in the near lane. Here's the stock car. 21.39.46, that is a 7.1000 speed, heading into race number two. Pro Auto up seven. Pro Auto up one. Dior with a 21.41, the Pro Auto with a 21.47. Pro Auto up one, race three. Twenty-one thirty-four to a thirty-nine. Pro Auto is up six, heading into race number four. Pro Auto puts him to bed. Twenty-one thirty-nine to forty-four. He grabs the gatekeeper spot. Let's see what he can do against the number eleven orange turbo tram. Tram, 38 to 47, up 9. That Pro Auto is not consistent. Tram up 9. I don't think I switched lanes, but I don't think it matters. It's done. <laughs> 36 to 51. That's all I've got to see. Not impressed with that Pro Auto at all. 
last up, and he will be facing the Pro Auto, is this 31 gram Camaro Z28. I really like the top end it had on this thing, and now with uh, some garage time, let's see what it can do on the track. Start race one from the back. Good start. All Camaro. 37 to 42, yeah, we woke it up. Five one thousandths advantage. Race two. <laughs> the Pro Auto got the jump on him, ran that garbage time, and then the uh, Camaro drove around it 46 to 57. I don't know about the starts on this guy, so I'm going to go up and start it from the top, but we will keep the Camaro with the advantage. We're saying the Camaro is up five, a rerun of race two. We'll start it from up here. Camaro runs him down. <laughs> Those are horrible times. But he's up seven after two races. The top end on that Camaro is one of the more impressive things I've seen in quite some time. I really wish there was a mile track or a half mile track close by because he would be pretty cool to watch. Camaro is up seven. Better start. All Camaro. It's over. Yeah, it's over. You are the new gatekeeper, and that deserves to be where it is. <laughs> I'll show you the times, and we'll call it a day here, guys. Camaro ran a 21.27. I don't think his day's done. we got to put him up against that tram. That's freaking impressive for a 31.2 gram car. And 2142 for the whatever, the Pontiac stock car. Yeah, I was going to sign off, but not so fast. If it's running a 27, uh, let's see what it has for this turbo tram. 31.2 grams. I just picked this up at a flea market for a buck 67. It's one of those three cars for five. I don't know about your flea markets, but a lot of them are three for five. But that's still a deal. You know, you can't complain about that. So, here we go. We'll start it from up here. Race one for the number 11 spot. If that Camaro gets a good start, I think it's going to be a good race. Got a good start. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> it went out. And the Turbo Tram kicked in its third Turbo. And uh, it's got a 6 1,000 speed. Let's switch it up. That was a great race. The way that Camaro has been finishing by half track, it was out on that turbo tram and I thought it's over but the turbo tram's up six right now good start good race turbo tram by a whisker it was up six now it's up ten let's go to race three race three and it's over yeah the tram got him good race 35 to 40 we do have a new gatekeeper. He will be replaced. I know there's going to be cars running faster than this, but I want to keep him in a special place. Because if there's ever like a lightweight half mile race, I'd be curious to see what this guy does on a track like up a chase where it's a little bit longer and you got the turns and you got a front end like that that can probably manage the turns pretty well. I think he might do pretty good. Guys, thanks for joining me. I gave you a peek at some of the cars that are going to be in the 4th of July race, but not all of them. So I'll be sure to tune in next week. But for right now, appreciate you joining me. And we will catch you down the road.